Bow your head with me, please. Oh, Lord, well, Father, Jesus Christ, I am a sinner who is chief, Lord, and I repent. I repent of myself, Lord. You are my Savior, Lord, and I trust on you that you paid my debt. And Lord, I am in your debt. We all are in your debt, Lord, to walk as you would have us to walk as a testimony of you, of your saving grace. Thank you, Lord, so much for your mercy and for the brethren who have corrected me, who have rebuked me, have chastened me, and for your provision through the brethren, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, Father, my Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, um, thy will be done. Lord, this is a very big video, and only you, Lord, can make it happen. Through I, a sinner who is chief, Father. Please bless this time if it is your will. Please, Lord. You, you spake through an ass. Speak, Lord, for your servants hear it. Wash us in the regeneration of your word. May we desire the sincere milk of the word. Please give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts, that we may know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that is thou, O Lord, Jesus Christ, our God and Father. Guide me personally, Lord, along that path of repentance, to be a witness. Thank you for the opportunity to witness unto a, a son of Ishmael this morning, and um, May your blessing rest upon all the brethren, Lord. Alexander, Jeff Jones, Jeff Allen, Matthew Landau, uh, Frederick Noon, <clears throat> Jacob Thompson, Brian Denham, Victor, the beloved Matthew Monson, the beloved Brother Justin, Brother Christopher, the beloved Matthew Green, Brother Mario, Brother Sasa, <laughs> Brother Jonathan, Brother Christopher, and of course, the sweetest, beloved brother, Aaron Deering Judge. And oh, I forgot to mention Brother Matthew Landau and Brother Philip Newton, I think. But uh, bless us today, Lord, with your mercy and your grace. And in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Beg your pardon, brethren. Um, okay, yeah, here. Yeah. Pray that you may be counted worthy. Now right away, when you say that, those who are the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, enemies of the Church of the Living God, they'll say, well, it's not in the Scripture like that. These are the same that will say things, well, Bible isn't in the Scriptures. And they are the same that will say, well, Trinity isn't in the scriptures, but yet the scriptures teach the Trinity. More on that one later. But um, pray that you may be counted worthy. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible. And please follow me along in the scriptures that you and I, hopefully you will, be following me along in the book, King James Bible, the real Bible. <coughs> we have <clears throat> quite, a, 
quite a bit of scripture that we are going to look at today. Quite a bit. And on to the brother that, um, that gave the crumbs. You know who you are. Our Lord and Father, Jesus Christ, bless you abundantly. Oh, and very quickly, I just remembered, um, Lord, uh, may your blessings rest upon the sweetest brother, Alan Allen. <laughs> oh, Lord, may you bless him abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> so many people that we pray for. <laughs> First, let's establish something. Turn in your King James Bible, the real Bible, to Ephesians chapter 1. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1. Your Bible, if you decide, if the Lord leads you to follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today, your Bible going to get a workout. Follow me along in the scriptures, okay? Please do this. Now, in praying that ye may be found worthy, one might immediately interject was like, well, uh, no one's worthy, Brad. It's like, yeah, I know that. I know that. And some will say, well, we have eternal security. Yeah, I know. Let's look at that. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. It's important that we establish this first. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. We read, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The redemption of the purchased possession is the catching away, the resurrection of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. We are eternally secure today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. <clears throat> of course, and y'all ought to know these scriptures embedded in your head. And of course, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 tells us, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You are sealed. You are eternally secure today in the body of Christ. Okay? Let's check a reference on that in John chapter uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Now, I'm not going to repeat this throughout this video, but you have to remember that while Jesus Christ, our Lord God and our Father, was on the earth, before he died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, he was here as king, offering the kingdom onto the Jewish people. It is imperative to remember that. Doctrinally, the gospel accounts unto the death, burial, and resurrection were doctrinally in the Old Testament. Okay? We have to remember that. That is key. That is key. Okay? But, John chapter 10 is very significant. Because the Lord, our God and Father, Jesus Christ, big pardon, gives the first reference, if you will, onto the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. And there are types within the Old Testament, okay? Look at Lot. Look at Abraham. Oh, oh excuse me. Look at Lot and look at Noah, okay? Just... For examples, okay, that the righteous are taken out of the way before God's judgment is poured out. Okay, it's important to remember that. But John chapter 10, verses 27 on to verse 30. Now, of course, you can read all the context on your own time. John chapter 10, verses 27 on to verse 30. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Remember, he is speaking as king. 
on the earth. Okay? He offered the kingdom onto the Jewish people. Okay? So when he is speaking here, he is speaking as king, as it were to be in the millennial kingdom. But this is very important to note. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Okay, now, that's not two persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay, that is not two persons. Okay, the soul of the skin suit, the body, the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, the soul got the Father, okay? Verse 30, I and my Father are one in essence. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I and my Father are one in nature. I and my Father are one. Okay? Okay? So why are we looking at this? This assures us that today, in the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation which is coming to an end, we are eternally secure. Okay? You cannot lose your salvation because it is not your salvation. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? For by grace are ye saved through faith. Okay? It is not our salvation to lose. We are eternally secure today. But now see, the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, and of His pure, perfect Word, the King James Bible, they like to say, well, yes, we are eternally secure. Yes, we are. So then it doesn't really matter. You know, yeah, things like, yeah, we should walk according to the scriptures, but you don't have to, because you're not going to lose your salvation. There are a lot of people out there who are fine with being, how you say, the armpit of the body of Christ. There are some out there who like to make this argument, it's like, well, hey, yeah, I sin, yeah, I do this, nobody can be sinlessly perfect. I'm going to link that video in the description box. Of this video okay um, nobody's perfect yeah yeah we should walk worthy of the calling of our Lord Jesus Christ our Father according to the scriptures given to us in the Pauline epistles we should but you know it's not gonna affect your salvation this is true this is true but why would you want to settle for less Why would you want to settle for less? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 15. Now, <clears throat> remember, you are eternally secure today if you are truly saved and born again of the body of Christ, the church of the living God. You can't lose your salvation because it is not your salvation to lose. Okay? It is God's grace that saves you through faith. Okay? However, you can do a lot of things to just make an absolute mess of your life and also shame our Lord and Father, Jesus Christ. Thank you, pardon me, brethren. There's a smudge on my glasses here. You can sure do a lot. You can sure do a lot to mess things up, to ruin your life. And remember, you reap what you sow. 
1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 15. Every man's work shall be made manifest, the work you do for the Lord. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And then if you look up at verse 12, you'll see the examples. Okay? Things that will abide the fire and things that will not. Okay? Let's continue. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. <clears throat> But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by purgatory. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> you Catholics. Yet so as by fire. This is not talking about purgatory. There is no third intermediate stage where people have to go be purified by fire in order to make themselves worthy to get to heaven. That is blasphemous nonsense. Remember, brethren, the Apocrypha Maccabees, where the, uh, I think it's first, it's either first or second Maccabees, where uh, the main doctrines of their purgatory are found, are not inspired scripture. Okay? They're not. But this tells us that, yeah, you're eternally secure. You're sealed. Whether you like it or not, and why you wouldn't, I don't know. But anyway, whether you like it or not, you are going to heaven. What's your standing going to be in heaven? And and these people, uh, you know, throw out things like, well, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Yes, yes. But... Okay, but why would you settle for less? Why not strive to walk worthy of your vocation, to walk worthy of your calling? Why settle for just getting in? You're sealed. If you're truly saved and born again, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. So, heaven is... Going to heaven to forever be with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Yes. To be in heaven with the Lord. Yes. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yes. But after your time down here that the Lord has allotted you, don't you want any rewards? 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read this whole chapter. Can you handle this? If you can't, it's already 18 minutes in. If you can't handle this, then go away. I love you. If you can't handle it, then go watch something else. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 in its entirety. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Now, it says father's wife. We do not know if it's his birth mother. Um, I personally tend to believe that it is not his birth mother that's being referenced here because it says his father's wife. It doesn't say his mother. Okay? That is my personal belief. It could have been his real mother. Ew. Ew. But it says his father's wife. Check this out. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, 
Paul has judged already. As though I were present, concerning him that hath so done this deed, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, lowercase s, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved, lowercase s, in the day of the Lord Jesus. Again, another reference to being eternally secure. But you can sure make a whole mess out of your life. And you mess around long enough, the Lord will give you over so that you will be taken out of the way. Killed, so to speak. And looking at verse 2, it says, And ye are puffed up and not rather mourn. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned. Beg your pardon. You know what was going on? You want to know what was going on? I'll tell you. Look, we'll continue here in a second. But you know what was going on? Oh, you're you're sleeping with your father's wife. But we're, we're not going to judge you. No, this is when you need us. This is when you need to be amongst the body of Christ, the church of the living God. We're not judging you. And hey, all you people, look, we're Christians and we're not judging anybody. No, all are welcome. You tell me something. Does that kind of philosophy <laughs> sound familiar to any of you? They were puffed up because they were allowing this guy in, not judging him. Let's continue. Verse 6, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Just a little sin. But one sinner destroyeth much good. That's in Ecclesiastes. Go find it. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Maybe saved, truly saved, born again. But you're doing some really gross stuff. And we don't want you here. Repent of this thy wickedness. Go away. Go away. And brethren, if you have ever been on the receiving end of that, hi. Very painful. That's when you get down on your knees. Search the scriptures and go to the Lord yourself. Not to men. Not to a YouTube video. Not a commentary. But the Lord and his word, the King James Bible, the real Bible. Let's continue. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. We're going to be about these people when we step outside our doors. Okay? You know, I do a lot of tracting, especially now. Okay? Between the moving, trying to find a job, I'm out there tracting. Almost daily. Okay? We're going to be out amongst these people. But see, we are a testimony. The way we live our lives, the way we behave ourselves, not only in the eyes of the public, but in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, who seeth in secret. You can be one way out there, but how are you in here when it's just you and the Lord? Uh -huh. Let's continue. <clears throat> Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with the idolaters, 
for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you, not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother, brother, <coughs> be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. That, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Let's continue. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without God, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from amongst yourselves that wicked person. So see, yes, we are eternally secure. Yes. But see, it matters for your rewards in heaven how you live your life according to the scriptures. Okay? Again, okay, look at me, look at me. Okay? You can't lose your salvation today, even if you try. If you are truly saved and born again, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? You get that? Okay, not, not your head, not your head. Okay? You can't lose your salvation because it's not yours to lose. Do you got that? Okay? Do you get that? But you sure can really mess up where you're going to be in heaven. Not saying that there's like sub-levels and you take an escalator. No, no. Why do you want to settle for the least? Why? And if someone persists in that, have no fellowship with them, and kick them out of your congregation, your little uh, body of believers, if you get together in a house or something like that, kick them out of the church. The body of Christ, the church of the living God, not, not the building, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 23 on to verse 27. First Corinthians 9, chapter, chapter 9, verses 23 on to verse 27. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run, that ye may obtain... You have salvation if you are truly saved and born again. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. Why you wouldn't? Never mind. Is that all you want? You say, well, Brad, that's covetousness. Um, you, you search these scriptures. It's okay to covet rewards in heaven. And you do it out of a heart because, guess what? The Lord Jesus Christ paid your debt and my debt. The very least. The very least. And we're going to look at that scripture reference. I know what you're thinking. The very least we owe him is to abstain from all appearance of evil. Yeah, we're going to sin. We're going to mess up. But we need to strive, brethren, especially right now. Is there something wrong with you? Let's continue. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hey, don't watch porn. One day you're at home, lonely, things ain't going good. You get that in your, in your flesh, you know, the sagging skin suit, and oh, get it. We are to have self-control, and we are to mortify 
our members, our flesh, to put it down. Is that easy to do? No. Some like to say it gets easier with time. I beg to differ. It gets harder with time. But see, that's the fear of the Lord. You fear Him. Are you afraid of God? You fear the Lord. And, and let's remember this admonition. Go to Isaiah now, chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. One verse, read the context on your own time. Depart ye, uh, 52, 11 in Isaiah. Isaiah 52, verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. That's another dispensation, Brad. Second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six. Verses fourteen and eighteen. Be ye new <clears throat> Now remember this is talking about fellowship. It doesn't pertain to marriage because you read the whole chapter, which we're not going to do. You will see that. Is it a good idea if you're married and you're married to an unbeliever? Eh. If the two of you are okay with each other and can respect one another, yeah. But otherwise, eh. more on that in another video. Second Corinthians 6 verses 14 on to verse 18 to finish the chapter. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God, which temple of God ye are the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, you know, and the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you in this sagging skin suit. Let's continue. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. <laughs> As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God, saith the Lord Almighty. Excuse me. One more. One more. Okay. You saw that under the law, right? In Isaiah. Here he's making a reference to it in uh, the Pauline epi uh, epistles, the uh, time of the Gentiles, this dispensation. Oh, you know the other one, don't you? Uh, I would hope you do. I would hope you do. Revelation 18, verse 4, one verse. This is after the body of Christ has been removed, resurrected, caught up. And I heard, uh, Revelation 18, verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Let's read verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Who is the her? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism, the Catholic so-called church. Okay? What are we seeing here? Why are we looking at this thus far? Luke chapter 21, verse 36, one verse. One verse. Luke 21, verse 36. Come on, work with me, fingers. 
I don't type things out, by the way, as you've noticed. I like to use my Bible. I hope you do too. Luke 21, verse 36. Now, remember, remember, when he said this, he is speaking to who? To Jews. He was the king, as king, offering the kingdom on to the Jewish people, the millennial kingdom. Okay? Now, it was prophesied in the uh, prophets, okay, that he was going to be crucified anyway. But see, God is a just God. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is a just God. If he didn't offer it, he wouldn't be just, would he? Right? You have to keep that in mind when you start screaming, Oh, brother, that's for another discipline. You hear my house alarm, right? Zena, be quiet! Luke 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, that doctrinally is not for us today. It is not. Because we looked at the evidence given to us in Scripture, in the Bible here, we already looked that we are sealed unto the day of redemption. We are going to heaven. That's why we looked at that first. That's why we went through all that first before we got to this. Okay? But, the point is, this right here is instruction in righteousness. The point is, now let's read this again. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Beg your pardon, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Talk about distractions. Okay. That background noise was my wife's phone. She forgot it. Anyway. Let's read this again. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Okay, like I said, doctrinally, this particular verse does not appear, is not there for us today. Okay, instruction and righteousness. However, go to Romans chapter 12 now. Very familiar verse. Tw uh, Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Is it not reasonable to live your life in accordance with the Scripture? And again, nobody is perfect. There is no such thing as sinless perfection in this life. You say you don't sin anymore. You lie. You lie. You're a liar and you're full of pride. There's two sins right there. He died on the cross for me and for you, if you are truly saved and born again. And he shed his blood on that cross to pay for your sin. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's in the book of Leviticus. Go find it. Okay? Your reasonable service is to put on the new man. And these who argue against it, what sin don't you want to give up? Why settle for the least when you can have just that little bit more? I don't understand it. I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? Let's continue. You know this verse by heart, don't you? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's will is perfect. As uh, my beloved brother Alexander taught me, you know, um, you know, well, he, he mentioned to me through the Holy Ghost, of course, uh, 
You know, Brad, I, I pray God's will be done. Your will be done. And if you want to answer anything about me, then your will be done. You know what I'm saying? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, that's in the Pauline epistles. We're supposed to be separate, different, not conforming. <coughs> yeah, you're going to sin. But why not strive to live according to this book. Why not take thought in your mind to watch your filthy mouth? The Lord is that spirit that dwells within you. You have God the Father living in you. Our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's in here, the sin, uh, sagging skin suit. Are you good? Why do you want to subject the Lord to seeing the things that you see and thinking the things you think? Hi! <laughs> By the way, hi! Go to James. Now, James, uh, specifically Hebrews and James, I do wholeheartedly, personally believe, and I totally believe it is more than provable that Hebrews especially and James especially is specifically for the time of Jacob's trouble. I believe that wholeheartedly and I believe that I can prove it to you. But James chapter 4 verses 1 through 10. And keep this in mind that James is written on to the Jewish people for the time of Jacob's trouble. Keep this in mind. With the mark of the beast that's in the right hand or in the forehead. Okay? Keep this in mind. From whence, uh, James 4, 1 through 10. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask, and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Brad. Your name? Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now, we read something very strikingly similar in the Pauline Epistles, Romans 12, 1 through 2, right? And we're seeing it here again. This is during the time of Jacob's trouble. You take that mark in your right hand or in your forehead, you're damned, you're going to hell. There ain't no oopsies. You're done. You're done. You can lose your salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble. You take that mark, it's over. And what do you think they're preparing everybody for out here? Hmm? America is that close to being cashless. <laughs> Think about it, especially during this time for what this is written for and or to whom it's written for. Excuse me. Let's continue. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace Unto the lowly. Reference that with Proverbs 3, 34. Submit yourselves, therefore, to 
Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. And he shall lift you up. Are you seeing a pattern here? We saw in Isaiah. Come out from among them. We also saw it. We also have seen this reference in the Pauline epistles. Doctrine for us in the time of the Gentiles. And also right here for the time of Jacob's trouble. See, it crosses dispensational lines. Conforming to the scriptures, the word of God, the King James Bible, the real Bible. Okay? You get it? Okay? And of course, let's look at one more. The first, uh, uh, first John 2, verses 15 and 17. Love not the world. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the, lusts there, and the lust thereof. Excuse me. But he that doeth the will of God abideth Forever. Are we learning something there, brethren? Also, now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 on to verse 29. First Corinthians 11 verses 27 on to verse 29 talking about self-examination wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh damnation, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. That has nothing to do with the Eucharist. The blessed cookie. Self-examination. To examine ourselves. Prove your own selves, whether or not you are in the faith. Know ye not your own selves? Now, go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 and verse 38. This is instruction in righteousness. But you got to remember, brethren, Christ needs to be first in your life. I. Christ needs to be first in your life. In the beginning, God. The, the first words in the scriptures. In the beginning, God. You wake up in the morning, in the beginning, God. Is Christ first in your life? Matthew 10, verses 37, on to verse 38. 
He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Verses 23 on to verse 26. Luke chapter 9, verses 23 and verse 26. And he said unto them all, Jesus, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever shall, will save his life shall lose it. Giving in to the system. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain what is a man for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his father's, and of the holy angels. Luke 14. Luke 14, 26 on to verse 33. Luke 14, verses 26 on to verse 33. If any man come to me, and hate not his father or mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, brethren, he's not saying that you go up to your mother or your father or your wife. It's like, I hate you. No. Christ needs to be first. First and foremost. If your mother or father or your father and mother don't want anything to do with Christ and persecute you because of your relationship with Christ, Christ has to come first. You're married, your children, your brothers, your sisters want nothing to do with the Jesus Christ, our God and Father of the King James Bible, the real Bible, not this fake sissy one who doesn't judge anybody just like they were doing in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and they persecute you for it and are contrary to you and everything. Christ has to come first. Christ needs to be first. That's what he's saying. That's what Paul taught. And he was our example on how to do that today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? You get that, right? Okay, let's continue. And whoso doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. What ground are you built off of? Sand, stony, thorny, or good ground? Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Christ needs to be first. 
And if Christ is first in your life, and if you're married and your wife is of the same mind, of the same spirit, praise the Lord. If not, you got some praying to do. Again, more on that in another video at another time. Okay? Now, go to Matthew chapter 25. Now, Matthew chapter 25 is after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God our Father, talks about the second coming and also the time of Jacob's trouble. And the precursor on two. Okay? Matthew chapter 24 is written on to the Jews. He's speaking to the Jews. It's about the time of Jacob's trouble and his second coming. Not the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not what Matthew chapter 24 is about. But now we read this. Matthew chapter 25. Guess what? We're going to read this whole thing. Oh! Can you handle this? Huh? Is this too much for you? Huh? Is this too much for you? Matthew chapter 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven, the actual physical, literal kingdom that is in Jerusalem, where when our Lord returns after the body of Christ is caught up, resurrected, and he comes back with us, the body of Christ, his bride, Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. The actual, physical, literal kingdom of heaven. Let's continue. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Now, a lot of people like to make a whole lot to do about the five, about the ten virgins. About, okay, the five were Gentiles, or the other five were of Israel. Uh, a lot of People like to make a big deal about the oil and the lamps. No. Ten virgins. You see in the Old Testament about the virgin daughter of Israel. Okay. You get that? Okay. Let's continue. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Now for our instruction in righteousness right here, right now. You can only play being a part of the Church of the Living God, a member of the body of Christ for so long before you are find out before you are found out what you truly are. Okay? Are you walking worthy? Yes, again today we are eternally secure. But why settle for less? And if you're faking it, and it says, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. False converts. They were all virgins. The virgin daughter of Israel. Okay? 
like I said, a lot of people like to take a uh, focus on the oils and oil in the lamp about that being the Holy Ghost. A lot of care Catholic and Pentecatholics focus on that. Some like to take this and say the five were Gentile, the five were Jewish. Some like to go off on that. What we see here in the text is that there were ten virgins. The virgin daughter of Israel. And this is following Matthew chapter 24. And it says specifically the kingdom of heaven. That's all we're going to do on that. Okay. Verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man tra traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. We're all today in the time of the Gentiles called unto the ministry of reconciliation. But you have a talent that the Lord has given you that he wants you to use for his glory, not your own, that only he can fill you with and only he can get glory through it because it is what he has given you. You have something to offer the body of Christ. You have something you can do to reach the lost. I don't care who you is. Brother, sister. I don't care if you're not out there doing tracks. I don't care if you're not out there uh, uh, reading out the scripture for everyone to uh, hear. I don't care if you're not doing videos. You have a job to do, boy. Girl. Why settle for less? Let's continue. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Just sat on it. Didn't do anything. This is instruction in righteousness. Remember, okay, if you made it this far, you've obviously saw the first couple of minutes of the video where we address eternal security today in this dispensation. Okay? Because in other dispensations, the Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, come and go. You could lose your salvation. Today, in the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation, you can't lose your salvation if you're truly saved and born again, even if you try. And why would you want to? Why would you not rather be converted and give your best unto the Lord? I don't get it. Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained more, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Can you get that sense of accusation? Yea, the, the woman that you gave me, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. And I, look, you're a hard man. And you, uh, you're a hard man, beg your pardon, 
You are an hard man. And you're reaping where you haven't sown. And you're gathering where thou hast not strawed. Get it? And I was afraid. And went and hit thy talent in the earth. Lo! Here thou hast that is thine. Do you catch that accusation? You're a hard man. You're reaping where you haven't sown. And you gathereth where thou hast not strawed. I was afraid because you're all this. Pointing back at the Lord. The woman that thou hast given me, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. Oh, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Let's continue. The Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked, wicked, and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Can, can you catch that sense in this? <laughs> thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I strawed not, where I sowed not, Beg your pardon? And gather where I have not strawed. Huh? Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. You should have done at least something. Should have done at least something. Rather than just sitting there. Unchanged. Unaffected. And if you're truly saved and born again, the Lord will change your life. It just happens. It's a consequence of salvation if you want to say it like that. But a blessed one. Take therefore that the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. Separating the nations instead of mingling them all together like the uh, Tower of Babylon, which Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, is trying to do right now. Oh boy, let's continue. <clears throat> And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate the one from the other, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall sh and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his, on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now this is all works. That he's talking about here. Hence telling you for who it is. Okay. But for our instruction in righteousness. Why do you want to settle for. Just getting in. To heaven. By that much space. Why. We. Owe it. The very least. Unto our Lord to walk worthy of our calling. Hi. Look at me. Look at me. To hell with your excuses. To hell with your excuses. What you waiting for?
Let's continue. For I was hung for I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Remember, these are all works which the kingdom of heaven, you know, the millennial kingdom, will be. You won't need faith when Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. You'll be able to see him. Okay? Let's continue. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king, notice the capital K there, shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto, the, unto one of the least of these my brethren. He's talking about the Jews. Ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them, On the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was prepared for who? The devil and his angels. For who? The devil and his angels. To quote Peter Ruckman, the late Peter Ruckman, then what are you doing going down there, stupid? You don't have to go there. Why are you going? Why do you want to go to hell, stupid? I had to throw that in there. Sorry. But let's continue. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. Again, these are works. Talking about the millennial kingdom. Okay? This is instruction in righteousness, not doctrine for us. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord... When saw we thee and hungered, or thirst, or a, str or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Well, it doesn't matter how we walk today. We're eternally secure. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You and I owe the Lord at the very least. At the very least. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We, you and me, Church of the Living God, brother, sister, truly saved and born again, body of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwells in you. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. You're going to sin. Yes. Yes. But are you not striving to walk worthy of the vocation wherein, wherewith ye are called? Like I said, in this video, in the description, I'm going to put a sinless perfection video that I that the Lord, excuse me, that the Lord had me to do, and also in the description uh, box, I'm going to put a link for a very long video about uh, debunking the faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation lie. Okay, I'm going to put that in the description box as well, and maybe one, if not both, of the salvation videos that the Lord had me to do. Okay, so let's continue. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. 
endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, capital S, in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, capital S, even as ye are called into one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and one Father, and one God and Father of all, beg your pardon, who is above all and through all and in you all. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. You are sealed until the day of redemption. You're sealed by the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit. Just one God. Not three. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Persons. Making. Hey, you know. It. Hey, hey, listen. If you're struggling with that, search the scriptures. And if you're still struggling with that, I don't know what to tell you. I, for one, for the Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Father, I reject the satanic teaching of the Trinity. I had to say that. And verse 7. But unto every one of us is grace, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy. Because think about this. Church of the living God. You're saved and born again, and you're just sitting there uh, on your tough. You hid your talent in the sand, and you haven't even passed it on to anybody who might be able to do something with it. Just sitting there. Yeah, you're going to go to heaven. Yeah. Think of the embarrassment. Seriously. Think about the embarrassment you're causing to our Lord, who lives within you. Think of the anger of the Lord, of what you're doing to his temple, and to the fact that he may give you over to the destruction of the flesh, hand you over to Satan, that the spirit may be saved. Think of the offense, contrary to the doctrines that you have learned, to the word of God. Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the King James Bible, the real Bible. Okay? Think about that. And you got a problem with profanity? You got a problem with drunkenness? You got a problem with smoking? Problem with pornography? Problem with lust? Problem with lying? Problem with covetousness? Stealing? God's grace covers it all. Hey, I'm going to heaven! I, yeah, I should live better, but hey, I'm going to heaven. Yeah, you are. Why settle for just that? Yeah, it is It is nothing but grace, a gift to go to heaven. But we've already looked at. We've already looked at. What was it? In um, 1 Corinthians 9... Verses 23 on to verse 27 again. Strive. Strive.
strive for more than just getting in by the skin of your teeth, brethren. We owe the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father, we owe him that at least. For what he has given us, we can never repay. I hope that tearing you up inside if you ain't doing that. I really do. I really do. Let's continue. Philippians chapter 3. That Thessalonians, Brad. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 15 on to verse 21 to end that chapter. Philippians chapter 3, verses 15 on to verse 21. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. He's not talking about sinlessly perfect. Be thus minded. And if anything, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. I pray, Lord, correct me, chasten me, rebuke me. Are you afraid, brother, sister, are you afraid to do that? Because of what he'll do and show you of how you may be wrong in something or what you're doing displeases him? What does that say? And if in any thing, I have that circled, ye be otherwise minded, I have that circled, God shall reveal even this unto you. I also have that whole thing circled. <laughs> Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which, which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. Again, today, in the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation, which is rapidly approaching its end, um, Paul is our example on how we ought to walk in the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation. Let's continue. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Glory in their shame. Look, I can drop f bombs and cuss those of the church of the living God out, but yet, hey, I'm still saved. Oh, I can get drunk. And I'm still saved. Yeah, you are, if you truly are. Yeah, you are. Does the concept even enter your brain of how you're offending the Lord. You're sealed. If you're truly saved and born again, came to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner, knowing that you're scum. Hi. Knowing that you can't save yourself. Hi. And trusting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just the mental fact that's provable through history and through this book that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. That is the gospel for today, yes. Are you trusting on him or in just facts? Why do you skip repentance, you? Why are you so against calling on the name of the Lord to be saved? Why? A little too uh, full of yourself, ain't you? Something you don't want to give up. Again, do you realize that maybe some of the things we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, may be doing, we're saved, we're sealed, we're going to heaven, whether we like it or not, 
I don't know why you wouldn't like it, but you know what I'm saying. What if something you're doing is making the Lord angry? And there is a big difference between long-suffering and patience. That, Brother, uh, Brother Alexander, that's his forte. Kind of like Brother Philip Newton. <laughs> Bless their hearts and souls. Verse 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, catching away the resurrection, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Colossians chapter 1, verses 10, under verse 14 now. Colossians 1, verses 10, under verse 14. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Oh, we're not perfect. We don't have to. Just be quiet. To hell with your excuses. If you're truly saved and born again, Come on, let's go. Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering. See, they're different things. With joyfulness. Uh, Brother Alexander. If you want, you can go ahead and go ahead and paste the definitions of uh, patience and long suffering in this video if you want. I'm just saying. Okay, continuing. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Not delivering, hath. You could, you could say that uh, verse 13 um, reference eternal security today in this dispensation. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Done deal. We're saved. Eternally secure. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sin blood of Jesus Christ. It's very precious. You know, wash up, you can get behind your ears even, see. Col uh, Colossians 3, 1 through 17. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 17. I told you this was going to be a lot of scripture. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek, <laughs> seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection, your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Heavenly rewards. You know, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred through the faith, uh, from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. If you think it is the highlight of being a Christian is dare I say you're missing it. Let's continue. <clears throat> For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Second coming, when we come down with him. 
Mortify, subject, put down, fight against your members which are upon the earth. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Notice it starts with fornication. Uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. If you want something so bad that it's taking place of where the Lord should be, number one, what, uh, what is it? Padre Dios Uno. Anything that takes the place of God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ in your life, that's idolatry. And what does it say there? And covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, the lost, not those who are truly saved and just not obeying. No. Continue. Prove that to you? Okay, okay let's look at the next verse. In the which ye also walked some time, when ye lived in them. But now ye also... Put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another seen that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Anger, wrath, malice, Blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, lying. How many, how many is that? I'm not saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's continue. <clears throat> and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Salvifically, there's neither what? Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free. Salvifically, it doesn't matter. There's no um, difference. There will be after we are resurrected, caught up. And you got these nitwit fools telling you that it's faith alone from the beginning unto the end. It's a lie. I'm going to put that video in this video. Okay, let's continue. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, Holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. See, Brad, see, see, we don't have to. <laughs> I know there are people I, out there, out there, those of you who think like that. See, we don't have to. You need to really check to see if you're actually saved and born again, if that's your mindset, if that's the way you think. See, hey, we don't have to. What are you defending? What sin are you defending that the Lord hates? That he... <laughs> that was fake, by the way. That he spits out of his mouth. What? What is it with you? What is it with you? Oh, see, oh, well, Brent says put on. That means we don't have to. We're eternally secure. Yes, we are. If you are truly saved and born again. Let's continue. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, 
Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, self-sacrifice, which is the bond of perfectness. For Lord Jesus Christ, God, my Father, and for you, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, there ain't one brother, brother, that I have any problem with. And even those who are my bitter enemies, I don't have a grudge against you, against my bitter enemies. And I do have bitter enemies. I don't have a grudge against my enemies. I pity you, my enemies, those of you who are lost, and those of you, my brethren, who vehemently disagree with me, that's fine. You see, when we're up there with the Lord after we go through the judgment seat of Christ, and I hope you're not behind me. <laughs> What's that going to matter? When we're up there. Let's continue. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. You out there walking, huh? Do it unto the Lord. Keep your track. You're there giving to people. Can I give you something? Put them on cars. If you go into a store that where they don't give you a hassle about them, <laughs> uh, you'll put them in books and magazines. If you're going to dig ditches, do it unto the Lord. If you're going to clean out toilets, do it unto the Lord. Whatever it is, you do it unto the Lord. And I'm not talking about, you know, what, you, what you're going to do. Go out there and play a game of blackjack unto the Lord. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I think oh, you, those of you, body of Christ, church, don't really God know what I'm talking about. First Thessalonians. Oh, excuse me. First Thessalonians chapter two. Oh, and by the way, we're going to read this whole chapter. Can you handle it? First Thessalonians chapter two. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before, and were shamefully entreated, as ye know at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. <laughs> For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. For our exhortation was not of deceit, excuse me, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. Man, please. Ugh. 
Let's continue. For neither at any time used we flattering words. Flattery. As you know, nor cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. I'm not going to flatter, with, flatter you with words. I'll tell you the truth. There are those of you out there, the body of Christ, my brothers, sisters, you're far greater than I am and ever will be. For those of you who are the least are far greater than I, the least of all saints, your brother, And your servant. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. This is my passion. I don't do this for money. But if the Lord will, that's what he wants to do. If that is what he is actually calling I, the least of all saints, your brother and lowly servant. If that's what he is calling, then his will be done. Part. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto you, any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. And ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. That ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. That ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also we thank God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Love the Lord and believe the book. Because if you don't love the Lord and believe this book, this ain't going to work. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered many like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always. For the, wrath, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you in for, eh, but we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time, in presence, not in heart, 
endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 1 through 12. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. What? Commandments? Oh boy, let's continue. <clears throat> For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, being pure, separate. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Again, we're sealed. Are you walking worthy? <clears throat> but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Now right now I don't have a job, <laughs> and trying to find one is very, very difficult. Very difficult. Everything's got to be online. Point is, brethren, how's your walk? For God, verse 7, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Oh, well, we don't have to. Shh, shh, shh. Shut up with your excuses. To hell with your excuses. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 23. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. That's all I got to say about that. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. We're getting out of here one day. Pray without ceasing. Every day. Every day, you know, the little prayers like Nehemiah, like what Brother Matthew Landau said, prayed in his mind, you know, before the king, Artaxerxes, or, well, yeah, yeah, I believe it, or Cyrus, beg your pardon. Quench, oh, wait, 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 
In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, not some things, everything. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to lose this house. Thank you, Lord, for losing my job. Thank you, Lord, for the struggles. Thank you, Lord, for the opposition. Thank you, Lord, for the threshing instrument. Thank you for the trials, the afflictions. You know, brethren, it's really easy to thank the Lord when things are going good. How about when everything starts to seemingly fall apart? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. Remember how we looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, being handed over unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh? <clears throat> A saved, born-again, King James Bible believer of the Church of the Living God. You can reach a point in your life. I reckon. Where. You will be handed over. Where the Holy Ghost the Lord in you will not warn you anymore. But just. Okay. You. You're going to be up here with me in heaven. But I got to get you out of here because you are making me look bad. You're making my word look bad, which he exalted his word above his name. And you're bringing shame to my body. I got you got to go. You got to go. Bye 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 bye. Despise not prophesying. You can prof be prophesying by speaking through the word, the Holy Ghost speaking through you, preaching the word or speaking the word. You know, King James Bible, the real Bible, you know. Prophesying. Speaking the word of truth, the King James Bible, as being directed by the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. Prove all things. Prove all. And I have that circled in this in here. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole, here's a person, spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Might as well finish the chapter, right? Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. That's why I do all those emojis. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I see the time it is. 2 Thessalonians, now, chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1. You're getting the point? I hope you are. We're almost done. We may forego, uh, forbear reading out of 1 Peter. 
because I think you're getting the point. Let's continue. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Yeah, we're going to read this whole thing. <laughs> Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all ah, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. How true. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. That ye may be accounted worthy, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye suffer, which ye also suffer. That ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Paul talking about if you're not saved, you're going to go to hell. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. And fulfill all and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Not just sitting there on your duff. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. We owe him that. If you're saved and born again, again, if you are saved and born again, you're going to heaven, you're sealed. But I'm like, how, why, why just sit there and live as one of the lost? Oh, you don't have to do that. You should, but you don't have to. Why? I think some of you love this world more than the one that's coming. Oh, because you can't see the one that's coming, right? No, you got to have faith and trust what this says, right? Oh, but you do. But yet, you're just like the world. I don't know, man. Chapter 3, verses 6, on to verse 18. 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 6, on to verse 18. You go ahead and read the whole book on your own time. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother, brother. I got that one circled that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of the Catholic Church. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, 
and not after the, after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power. Right there. Not because we have not power. They didn't have to work. Paul makes reference to that. But he chose none of those things, but rather to be an ensample. But to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. One of the biggest gripes against Brother Brian is that he doesn't work. And all of those who just attack him while teaching nothing of themselves. Not doing their own teaching. Did you see that? You know what kind of labor goes into getting this stuff? Now granted, um, a brother um, gave me a little base course, but you know what kind of labor this takes? Anyway, thank you, pardon. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle so I write, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy, no, Second Timothy chapter one, verses seven on to verse fourteen. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us, or saved, and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. And also, finally, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 13. But thou hast known, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, 
at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. <laughs> Deceiving and being deceived. Verse 12. I think some of you don't want to suffer that persecution. I really do. You don't go out looking for it like I'm going to go get persecuted today. Uh, hello? Hi? Hi, hello? You ever tried to witness to the loss before? Huh? Someone ever yell at you for putting a, a track on a windshield? Persecution is just going to happen when you are separate than, other than, not being conformed to this world, doing your reasonable service, putting Christ first. We owe the Lord a debt that we can't pay. The least you and I can do is to live our life in accordance with this book, with this book, the King James Bible, the real Bible, to live our lives according to the scriptures given for us today in the Pauline epistles, this, the time of the Gentiles, which is rapidly ending. You're not sinlessly perfect. But brother, sister, come on. We got to strive. Not for salvation, but for our rewards. Because you know what, brethren, like I said, I, I, I'm sorry if you're the one behind me at the judgment seat of Christ. We'll have all the time of eternity. But then again, I'm sorry if you're the one behind me. I want at least one crown. What about you? Don't you want at least one reward? But are you happy with having none? Doesn't, doesn't our Lord seriously deserve at least a little bit more? Or are you just going to sit there I'm going to heaven. I should live better, but I'm going to heaven. <sighs> Pass me another 50 bacon double cheeseburgers. I like bacon double cheeseburgers, by the way. Yeah, let me let me watch Hollywood movies. Yeah, let me let me really kick a fire. Let me play some video games. Like I said, I had quite a bit also marked here in First Peter to read you, but um, I think you got the point. I think you got the point. Let's finish this. Let's finish this. Isaiah 52. Verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. Second Corinthians again, 
again, we're refreshing. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath, the, hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do you do that? Search the scriptures daily to see if these things be so. You know, Brothers of other nations, I don't know what it's like over there for you. And those of you of other nations, make your videos telling us that we can pray for you better than what we, you know, what we hear on YouTube or the certain news things, you know. Brethren, the catching away could happen at any moment. I personally believe that the mark of the beast system could be implemented just like that. Just like I believe that they already have the vaccine. I believe that since the day this nonsense started, that they already had a vaccine. I don't buy this, that they don't have a vaccine. I think they already do. Then what is, uh, what is uh, Bill Gates of Hell doing? Propaganda? Making a delivery system? I don't know and I don't care. Where it says, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die, no. Let us call a solemn assembly. Let us declare fast. Just because we get in, uh, called up, resurrected, doesn't mean that we should lapse and fall back into things or walk less. As a matter of fact, I think we need to walk harder. Well, that's going to be it for this one. I might make another one today. I do not know. Uh, this is not it. We are going to be moving on the 26th. Actually, we get the keys for the apartment on the 25th. And uh, immediately when we get the keys, we're going to start picking stuff over there. Um, we do want to be out of this place the 26th. So there will be a small time where our internet will not be functioning. Uh, there will be a small time. I mean, we'll still have our cell phones, of course. But... Um, there will be a small time, a couple days, where we do not have uh, internet to make, you know, so I can make videos and stuff like that. So, um, uh, please, please continue to keep us in your prayers um, as we pray for many of you. And um, <laughs> the Lord's will be done.
I, this, is, this, this is my passion. This is my passion. But when you have five, seven, five or seven brethren, five or seven brethren, Telling you the same thing. His will be done. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your charity. Thank you. Anyway, um, I struggle with that. <laughs> I love you. I uh, will see you in the next video when that will be um kind of already the, whatever the lord will whatever the lord will i have ideas of course and i have some things that some other brethren have mentioned to me and uh yes but his will be done i love you i hope this has helped you and encouraged you and maybe challenged you Bye-bye.